I am going to be talking about the five whoosh, uh, of photograms. This is the phonogram that says, whoosh. so it's a little hard to say that, the five W's, no, it's the five WH's, no, so we don't use that kind of um, language when we're doing phonograms. So it's a little tricky title there, but we're going to talk about who is taught what and when and where the phonograms will fit into your lessons and why this is even important. And so I'm actually going to start with the why. Why do we want to teach phonograms? Okay, English, teaching English, the written code we call English, is a complex subject. Um, English is a global language now. It is a complex language. It has over a million words now and it has influence from many, many different languages. And so we could call English a complex subject. So anytime you're gonna teach a complex subject, what you wanna do is you wanna break it down into its core components. And when we're talking about the written code of English, the core components are the phonograms, the written symbols, that represent the sounds of the language. Those are the phonograms. And not only do we need to know the phonograms, but we also need to know the rules that govern how those phonograms work together in the code we call English. So what we want to do is we want to teach the phonograms in ways that the brain learns to recognize them automatically at lightning speed in for so that they're available to the student for both reading and writing. What we want the student to do is to learn how to apply phonograms and the rules in the context of a specific list of words. And this, the list, it's in the WISE Guide. And though that specific list models virtually every pattern of spelling in the English language. And so what the student will learn is how to decode words that he hasn't even been taught because he's learning how the code works. Um, I have a, a student that I think of whenever I talk about this, uh, a little girl that I tutored years and years ago. She came to me at the end of first grade and she was able to recognize two words. At the end of first grade, she could read two words, is and cat. And uh, she, let's just say she was not given what she needed. It was not her fault and it was not her ability to learn. It had to do with the educational setting she was in, the classroom, and um, just what was going on in that classroom that year. I worked with her for a year using these methods, teaching her phonograms. I hadn't even taught all 70 phonograms. Um, a year later, um, I did some testing. Now I have to say, again, she had not learned all 70 phonograms, hadn't gotten that far because the parents were kind of irregular in showing up for the tutoring sessions. I worked with her twice a week for 30 minutes each. And um, at the end of the year, I did some uh, diagnostic testing with her. And this little girl, was now at the end of second grade, well uh, into third grade reading ability. But what was really interesting about her testing was that um, I tested her ability to decode uncommon words. And so we have, uh, on that particular test, it gave her nonsense words that were modeling the phonics system of English. And her ability to decode was at the postgraduate level. Meaning, had I given her, say, a college physics textbook, she could have decoded the words. She had such strong decoding skills that that was the level at which she was decoding. Now, that doesn't mean that this little second grader could read a college physics textbook because obviously her vocabulary was not at that level but she had the ability to decode. She had learned the system. She, and, and like I said, I hadn't even taught her all of the 70 phonograms yet. So she had caught on to the system of how the code works. And, and it was just, it, that blew me away. That, and actually, she was not uh, unusual. A lot of the kids, many, many, many of the kids that are taught with this method, that is what we see in them. That's just how it works because we're teaching them how the code we call English. It's really the written code works. Okay, so the same way that a child learns to speak by mimicking the sounds uh, in the words that he hears around him, he's going to learn to read words 
by decoding the sounds that those symbols are representing. Now, Jean Chaw, she, uh, Dr. Jean Chaw, she was the reading laboratory director at Harvard University, and she described five stages of reading development. The first two stages, which is where spell to write and read really were, is, is strong in, okay? We address all of the levels, but where we really spend the bulk of our time is in the first two stages. The first one is linking the sounds with the letters, okay? And that's what we do when we're teaching phonograms. And then the second is that the, what a child needs to learn to read is to master the alphabet code, sound code, for quick and automatic response. So when we're working with the phonograms and we get into the spelling lesson, which is also a reading lesson, that's what we're doing. We're working on um, helping the child master the alphabet code. So Dr. Charles states, Early stress on code learning not only produces better word recognition and spelling, but also makes it easier for the child to eventually read with understanding. So a lot of times we have kids who they're able to read, meaning the parent usually is saying, well, they can decode words, but they don't understand what they've written. Well, if the brain is working so hard at the decoding stage, if, if the reading is not fluent, if they're not able to instantly recognize words, and if it's not accurate, then the brain's functioning is at that alphabet stage, that alphabetic code stage, and the brain is not free for the reading comprehension stage. So first, our brain has to learn how the code works, and then once that's automatic and fluent, then the brain is now free to understand the language that's being communicated in the written code. So if you've got a child who's struggling with comprehension, let's look at the decoding stage and see where the problems might be. Okay, so for a child to be successful at learning to read and write the English code, he has to have the phonograms instantly available to him. <laughs>